Today we're going to build a new format, something that hasn't been done before in theory. I mean, some people have already done this here and there, but for the most part it's not been done. And what this process is going to do as we go through it is show you how you could do it for any kind of music, any kind of format, any kind of anything. It's basically, what do you do when you're trying to make a new format? <laughs> Hey Buckaroos, welcome back to Music Com Academy. Today we're going to make a new format. We're going to take you through that and uh, you know, we're going to talk about it a lot and go through, you know, like, man, you know, where's the boundaries of being able to do this and what your thinking should be. Now before we get into actually doing a format, and what I'm going to try to do is put AC, an AC format and a country format together into one new entity that, you know, in your market has never existed before. But um, before we do that, I want to take you back, especially if you're younger and you've been, you know, listening to radio, you know, for the last 10 years or you've been in radio for five years or something. I want to take you back to, to the early parts of music radio and talk about what was there and then how formats started to be made and the thinking for those formats from the beginning when there was really only four formats maybe and we'll go through those up until now where there's like a million formats okay all different ones for the most part the way the thinking was for making new formats it was pairing away something and being left with a smaller piece of the whole of whatever the original format was you know easy example ac ac they were top 40 stations and then they just said you know what why don't we cut off the edges and that happened pretty much for almost all the formats like album rock that was a pretty wide berth of old rock songs new rock songs album track rock songs and then you know fred jacobs decided well why don't we just get rid of the new stuff and get rid of you know most of the album tracks and just do the old stuff let's do classic rock so it's pairing away a lot of the original format and ending up with something smaller, something way more refined. So that was you know, one way of they were going. And the other was out of desperation, which is, you know, kind of where we are now for a lot of radio. And a desperation move would be there really were no talk stations per se up until AM radio music stations started to have a really hard time holding audience. Everybody was moving to FM and one by one, AM stations started to turn into talk radio stations, actually news talk radio stations. There was music there, you know, just for your uh, knowledge. There was music on those stations in the beginning, a little bit, maybe two, three songs, maybe an hour, and the rest was talk and news, and then they would just get rid of the music altogether. And then, just like the other in the music stations, they would turn into all talk stations or all news stations. That was the first iteration. You know, news talk turned into brand new news only, all news, all day, 20 minute wheel, all that sort of stuff. So those are the two moves, desperation, like, man, we got to try something. What are we going to do? And paring down. Then along the way, it turned into, why don't we take different segments and try to put them together and make a format? It's almost like going all the way back to the beginning of the 60s with let's just say a top 40 radio station, which is playing country, it's playing rock, it's playing R&B, it's playing everything. And then they would pare it down into five or six different formats off that one thing. Then that sort of turned in way later on to like starting to put that thing back together again, but not using all of the original pieces. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do today. <laughs> Now, not being an expert in country music, I'd listened to country music for decades. I really like it, uh, but I'm, you know, I'm not super up on all the artists, especially now a lot of the new ones, you know, they change over pretty fast and uh, you know, they get lost in the shuffle. But you know, the idea of a bunch of country songs that are very, very pop sounding that they could be on an AC radio station, you know, that's been with me for ages and ages. And I wonder if anybody else had the same thought. Boom, I hit this person, holler. I don't know if this is a company or a person. Obviously, it's a person writing this, but you know, this seems like an elaborate site all about country. So here's the best pop country songs in their mind. So it's like, hey, what, are, what do these sound like? So I started going through the list. You know, it's an interesting list for sure. So, you know, as you can see, it's scrolling on the screen here. This is 50 songs that this person thinks, you know, is their pop country songs. Now, as I'm looking at this and going, hmm, how many of these artists 
and how many of these songs could actually cross over onto an AC radio station. Can they go beyond that sound line? There's a, there's a line of sound where something would fit. Um, do they cross it? Certainly Dan, Dan and Shay, I mean, you know, they've crossed it more than a few times. Miranda Lambert, um, I think Thomas Rhett, even though he hasn't, I think he could cross that line. Uh, Nelly Zed, Taylor Swift, for sure, like a million times. Hello. <laughs> Dixie Chicks, the Chicks, Maren Morris has already crossed it. This sounds like a total pop song to me, Jillian Jacqueline. Quite possibly, this song is actually on AC somewhere, you know, here and there. Like these things sort of sometimes pop on and pop off an AC radio station, but you know, it's not the radio station, it's just jumping on. So let's just go through the list a little bit, you know, see if anything else sticks out here. Um, that would be like, whoa, really? Um, okay, Chainsmokers, wow, there you go. Um, Keith Urban, Keith Urban for sure, most of his songs in my mind could easily, easily fit in. Um, okay, Carrie Underwood again, for sure. Lady Antebellum, Lady A, Need You Now. This, this song's like a mainstay of AC Radio. Um, so y you get the idea. So I just wanted to show you this, that, um, you know, there are songs that, you know, other people also sort of categorize like this. We're just taking it another step further. Now, the only other thing about this that might hamper them crossing over is AC radio stations tend to be not all that current, right? We all know that. They're currently 80 to 90% gold songs. So if the station is mainly gold, it's going to sound really weird to have a lot of current songs of country that all of a sudden appear on these. So you'd want to be looking at these type of songs and lean backwards or lean toward songs that you really believe have crossed into the mainstream and a lot of people know that song. You'd want to be looking for songs that fit the sound, our country, but also have some time built into them that they're not going to be like, what's that song? They've already heard it somewhere else. Wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, baby. Just had to psych up for this segment. You know, you got to kind of get into it a little bit. Um, my Calgary outfit from uh, attending the stampede out there. Awesome. So to continue on, if you want to see how close formats can be, just go back to lesson 73 that I did a while back. And, you know, we're showing you the, how really close and only a few songs move a radio station from classic rock to classic hits or, you know, vice versa. So you definitely want to take a look at that if you want some really super detailed song by song stuff. To this, you know, we're really talking concept of about, again, taking country songs, putting them on an AC radio station, and sort of inventing a new station, a new format. Now, I think, you know, you could do this from scratch and just boom, hit it and go. Or I think if you're, you know, if you're an AC radio station, and you're on in the market and you're getting killed um, by, by another AC station, I think you could just start doing this and just add it in and, you know, and sort of morph into it. Even though I don't like morph stations all that much, uh, I think you could do that. So let's go through some things. First off, the circumstance, I mean, you gotta take a look at your market and go, can this market handle country music? Does it have a fondness for country music? And some obvious comes to mind, obviously. Calgary would one of those if you're in Canada, Edmonton. Um, actually, country does really well in Vancouver, which is somewhat of a surprise, probably anywhere in the U.S. South, and actually most places in the U.S. North. Country actually does extremely well in northern markets in, in the United States, uh, you know, particularly in medium markets. You know, uh, I, Toronto, I think, is a place where you could actually pull this off, too. I really do. I had a chance to go to a couple concerts in Toronto at the Molson Amphitheater, and it probably holds 13,000, 15,000 people somewhere in there, and they're packed. And it's the Zac Brown Band. That's one of the concerts. And the people like know all the words. They're singing along, whole deal. And then another one I went to was Tim McGraw. Same thing. You know, Tim McGraw was almost all women, which is, you know, AC territory. And they knew all the words. They're standing up dancing. They're singing 15,000, you know, probably 10,000 women doing that. And there's no country station in Toronto. And you go like... You know, it's like the third largest market in North America, English, no country station. And how do they know these songs? It's like, ooh, prime territory. In your market, what are you looking for specifically, you know, once you kind of get by, you know, okay, yeah, there, there's, there's a love of country music to some degree. 
I would look for a market that has a really large, strong AC radio station and either no competition or the next one down is way down in the pack. And ideally a really strong country station. In other words, those are the two stations that are battling it out for, for the top. They're in the top five and they're banging at each other. And it's ideal because it tells you things. It tells you that there's a wide country audience for sure and a big AC audience for sure. And probably a lot of people would have you know, listened to both and have heard the songs on both. Now, an even better market, if assuming you know that they, there's, a, there's a love of country music, it would be that there's no country music. You know, there's no country music station at all. I mean, that would be awesome. The other thing that you kind of, you know, want to be thinking about is that country stations in this day and age, you know, unless it's a gold country station, which are really rare anymore, almost all country stations now are very, very current. They're like CHRs playing country music. So they're very, very current stations where an AC station is a very gold station. That's going to matter down the road as we go on here. AC stations tend to average about 20 years back from today. So, you know, right now they're going to be averaging, if you put all the songs together and average the years, it's going to come out to like, you know, um, you know, 2002, 2003, 2001, somewhere in there. Now, think that through with country. Garth hit in the early 90s and, you know, country made a gigantic turn because of him and really sort of moved you know, I think to my ear, I think moved actually toward a lot of the songs are not that different from the Eagles, you know, and that, you know, Eagles mainstay, AC, pop country music isn't that far from the Eagles. You know, definitely bear that in mind. So if, you, if you're not familiar with country music um, and you want to go looking for gold country, what's strong and particularly, I mean, obviously you'd want to do music research, that would be great. If you can't afford that, I would go to WSM in Nashville and, and get an idea of the music that they're playing because they're all gold. Interesting because they flipped WSM and WSIX. It used to be like this, okay? Now it's like this, SM, like they're two strong country stations, but one is very current and one is all gold. The gold one is actually winning now in Nashville, at least at, as of this moment. They're winning in QM and they're winning in ratings and, and actual share. So great station to listen to and try to pick off the songs. Like, what are they playing? I'm sure that they're researched. Now to blend two formats together, you have to conceptually think of one format as the lead format, that's the radio station, and you're blending in a secondary format into it. Lead format's gonna be AC, for sure. It's an AC radio station, and you're picking off you know, songs that are country on a country format that will fit in. You think that you can slide them in and the audience, you know, real, won't really notice. They'll just, okay, yeah, fine. You know, hey, love that song, whatever, okay? A sort of um, quasi example of this was the Garth channel, which unfortunately it's not on anymore, so you can't, uh, you know, you can't listen to it, but it was on for, I don't know, five, I think around four or five years. It was on Sirius, and what Garth was doing was, it was his channel and they were playing songs that Garth loved, and you know, he ran the gamut. And primarily the lead format, the brunt of the songs were country, and then he would put in other songs. Some of them were AC, some of them were rock, like uh, play Nickelback and other things like that, which amazingly actually fit in really well with country, <laughs> you know, a lot of the Nickelback songs. But then he would go into CHR stuff, and some would fit and some wouldn't fit. So you have to be really, really careful what sonically and all that sort of stuff, what songs actually go together where they, they just mesh really, really well. I know when I was in Calgary and I first saw this, you know, which sort of gave me the idea for this, there's a bar out there called Cowboys. And when I was out there, um, it was a huge bar. I mean, you know, physically and also in stature, big bar. And you'd go in, like the first time I went in there and they're playing music and they're running actually 50-50. It was 50-50 country songs, Cowboys, that's the name of the bar. And it was also 50-50, Full on rock. It's doing back in black and you know thunderstruck and you know in I mean, really rock and roll songs that you could dance to. And the owner was actually you know he's the DJ and he had a really good ear for putting things together. And then as CHR started to kind of kick in, like maybe a year after they got there, more and more CHR started to come in. And again, he could blend them really well. So it became like maybe I don't know 60 percent rock and CHR and 40% country. 
And, you know, this is a big bar. This is one of the things as the bar grew bigger and bigger, and I don't know what they do now, but I know during Stampede, because I, you know, I knew the people there well, they would put up a huge monster, I mean a big monster tent, out in the back, and they had a lot of area in the back. And they'd bring in acts and just pay them. Lone Star, Tim McGraw, big rock acts, spare no expense. And during Stampede, for those 12 days of Stampede and those 12 nights, they'd do a million dollars a night. That's a bar. <laughs> That's a great business. Yeah, they do the whole year of those 12 days and then some. So I'm going to go through a bunch of artists and we're going to talk about their songs one by one. I mean, not every single song, but I'm mean, just like, here's the artist and here's one I think, you know, would fly. And, you know, it would give you, if you're really interested in this or you just want to just take it as an overall, but if you, you want to get specific and go like, geez, what would that sound like? You can, you know, like go on YouTube or, you know, Spotify or somewhere and just, you know, key in the songs and listen to them and go, hey, you know, deal for yourself whether you think that they would fit on an AC station, ideally maybe even your AC radio station. So let's just start out with the first one. First one would be Keith Urban. You know, the, and so to me, blue ain't your color. Oh my God, no problem at all. And The Fighter, I think that would fit. And I, I think there's a bunch of other songs, but just as an example, I just wanted to use those two. Carrie Underwood, Before He Cheats, Blown Away, no problem at all. Chris Stapleton, Tennessee Whiskey, oh my God, no problem. Luke Combs. Now right now, Luke Combs has got Fast Car on some CHR and actually on some AC radio stations already. He does a great version of Tracy Chapman's Fast Car. It's really good. I actually think that he can also, you know, you could also play, you know, When It Rains It Pours and, and maybe even Forever After All and Beautiful Crazy, but When It Rains It Pours, that was a huge country song. And I think you could either put it on, you know, right in the beginning uh, or because it was so big, or you would do Fast Car and you do that for a while. Now the audience is used to hearing Luke Combs. And then you just put the other one on and you, you know, you can say, you know, here's one of his bigger hits from, you know, from last year. And, and most people probably go, oh, okay. <laughs> Plus, it's a really great song. Dan Shea, 10,000 Hours, Speechless. I think you can get away with Toby Keith, You Shouldn't Kiss Me Like That. I think you could also get away with I Love This Bar. I, you know, I think it's just a fun song. I can get, you know, I think you can get away with it. And it's pretty iconic, really. Um, if you've ever listened to any country station, which is, that's sort of the people that you want. People who've been there, you know, and they're, you know, and they're crossing across the dial and stuff. Taylor Swift, Dixie Chicks, Garth Brooks, oh my God. The dance is like the Chris Stapleton, Tennessee Whiskey. Everybody loves that song if they've ever heard it even one time. That's just one of those, oh my God, unbelievable song. It is for sure tailor-made for AC, but AC doesn't play it. And he's like, what? I don't, I don't understand. I think you can get away with that. I think you could also get away with friends in low places. No problem. Again, gigantic song. Everybody knows you go to a wedding and somebody will play that. Uh, even though it's, you know, it's the only country song maybe that's played during the night and everybody will know it and everybody will get up and dance. It's just one of those things. The song has already crossed into mainstream everything. And then there's so many other Garth Brooks songs that, uh, that, you know, that would fit onto an AC radio station. Morgan Evans, Kiss Somebody. Uh, I'm thinking get away with maybe Day Drunk down the line. Morgan Wallen, Last Night, Wasted on You. Those two songs would, would certainly fit. Morgan Wallen getting played right now on some AC stations and actually climbing on the charts. Thomas Rhett, I think he's got, you know, maybe one song that you could play. Casey Musgrave, Sam Hunt. Brad Paisley, I think you could do Whiskey Lullaby. I think that would fit into an AC radio station. Brooks and Dunn, Neon Moon, that's a beautiful song. It, you know, it, it's a little bit country sounding, be, just simply because of the way their voices are, but it's, it's so melodic and such a pretty song, you know, and it's like medium slow tempo. It's just a beautiful song. It's just tailor-made for fitting on AC. I think you could get away with that. I think you could also get away down the road, maybe even out of the beginning with Red Dirt Road, Boot Scoot and Boogie, and you can take Honky Tonk out of the girl. Again, I don't know if I hit them right out of the gate, but I, you know, I think those songs, to my ear, would fit. They might need a little bit of explaining as you're playing them, talking them up, you know, making them seem like they're something really, really cool, but I think you can get away with it. Myron Morris, uh, Diamond Rio, One More Day, George Strait. George Strait is huge country. And he's had some songs, a lot of them are very country sounding, 
even though then the music is pretty melodic, um, but I think some of them would cross. Check Yes or No, I mean, that's been around forever, old song. I think that would cross, I Cross My Heart, Write This Down, Baby Blue. I think those songs could be played on an AC radio station. Kelsey Ballerini, Kenny Chesney, No Shoes, No Shirt, No Problem. You hear that a lot in bars, especially in the South, you know, where it's sunny and you're by a beach, it just kind of goes with the territory. Rascal Flats, What Hurts the Most, Life is a Highway. And then there's the artists that have already crossed and you got all of these to pick from and more. Kenny Rogers, Reba, Faith Hill, Tim McGraw, Lady Antebellum, Leanne Womack, remember Just Dance, Lone Star, Alabama, Crystal Gale, Dolly Parton, Eddie Rabbit, Leanne Rhymes. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Here's where we get into the nuts and bolts. So I would research, again, if you have the money, as many great country songs that you think will fit on an AC radio station and see what you come up with, because I think ideally to do this well, you're gonna need like 200, 220 songs somewhere in there. And I'm getting that by, you know, 18 hours a day, four songs per hour, and a three day repeat. Okay, that's where I get 220. Now, if you just wanted to cut that down and go to three country songs per hour instead of four, you're gonna need around 162 country songs. If you wanna cut it even more down to two, you only need 108, 110, somewhere in that range, country songs to make that fly. Now, what do you do with them? Okay, once you have them, well, you wanna agonize, this is gonna be where you put them and how you play them. You wanna agonize how you can play, let's just say two country songs per hour and make them disappear to the audience. You don't want them to notice them. You're almost looking at them to reverse it. Like these are really horrible crap AC songs that the general manager is forcing you to play because his wife loves them and she wants them played and wants them heard on the AC radio station. And you know, they're AC artists, but they're horrible songs. And you know, he's going, you need to play too. Mm -hmm. Where do you hide them? What do you do with them? And you, you know, you just can't put them you know, at midnight or the all night show. You gotta play them through the day, every hour. What are you gonna do with them? That's sort of the thinking, okay? How do you hide these songs? Now, the great part about this is these are not horrible songs. These are great songs. They are hits in this other format. They're different, but they are different, full on, 100% monster hit songs that you're moving across to play into your format, into the lead format. Now, a lot of this is getting the ratio right of the AC songs to the country songs. And I'll just say right here, because I thought about this a lot, and it's like, could you do a country station and add in AC? I don't think you can do that, because I don't think there's hardly any AC songs that actually really fit on a country radio station, because it has an entirely different feel to it and different dynamic, the music sort of as a whole. I think almost all AC songs, maybe I'm wrong, but almost all AC songs being put onto a country station would sort of sound like a train wreck in a bad way. So you've chosen the songs, you know the market, what's the ratio? That's what we kind of want to try to figure out here. Now, I would start with two songs per hour, two country songs. That'd be the easiest to fit in. Then I'd move it up to three after a while, after a while of listening, and you go like, okay, you know, yeah. And, and clearly, these two that you're playing, you know, it's gonna be the first tier. It's gonna be the most easy ones to fit in. You know, like Blue Ain't Your Color, Garth Brooks, and a lot of those, um, already been played country songs on AC at some point, you're gonna be adding those in because they're sort of like no-brainers, but you're starting to add a little country feel to your radio station, sort of almost like it's musical structure. Then I go to three, and I probably stopped there for maybe a long while, probably a good six months, before I added that fourth one in, unless you're in a market that can handle it. Um, you know, then you could probably handle four of them. I, I don't know if you could, I don't know if you could go to five. I, I just don't think you could pull that off Maybe you could, but I mean, you know, <laughs> that's pretty risky. I don't know if I'd try that. I just think that's a pretty high ratio. So what do you do with the song specifically? Do you just throw them into other categories? No, my God, no, okay. What you would do is you would definitely be making country only categories and you would start to make them almost like you do with any other, you know, song category. It's like the strongest ones and then the ones that are not quite as strong. And I would, you know, do it by year so you control everything that's in there and uh, you know to me i'd have like a tier of these are no-brainers and these are um like say uh, going back to the song when it rains it pours you know that that I, I think you can get away with that but that's like you know that would be the second tier great song awesome song 
big song, but you know, you're pushing the sound barrier a little bit more, so you'd want to have complete control of those. You'd want to know exactly where they are at all times, what follows those, or what's before those songs, and where they are on the, on the clocks and stuff. For something like a When It Rains It Pours, uh, I would probably put that out of a stop set. Uh, you know, I'd make one, one of those songs, you know, the weaker one, so to speak, out of a stop set, and I would put the other one that's, you know, like a no-brainer, in some sort of a sweep production thing in front of it, or I'd have the, the jock actually talk them up, blending them in with what they're saying. And uh, again, I, I'm pretty sure they'll just disappear. Lastly, and sort of the end of this lesson is, you know, the big one, how do you sell this whole thing to the public? Now, one way you can do it, again, if you're gonna morph this little by little is, you could just sort of really say nothing. You know, just talk about the music and, you know, and talk about how good you know, this song is and that song is and oh I love this and love that and really don't make anything at all about what you're actually doing. That's one way to go and um, you know you could pull that off no problem. The other is okay you're actually going to make a statement about the radio station that you are now doing pop and country. You're taking you know the best hits you know from pop radio and the biggest hits from country radio and you're putting them all on one radio station because, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I haven't got all the way through this one, but I mean, one easy one comes to mind is because it's true. All the other radio stations are boring and we thought we'd try something different. We thought we'd stick our necks out. People like hearing that. We thought we'd stick our necks out and we thought we'd gamble because we know your tastes are huge and we want to go along with you. Tell us some of the country songs you like. Tell us some of the pop songs that you love and we'll try to get them all on this one radio station. Now, what do you call it? I don't have no idea. I don't know. I was kind of kicking around ideas. Do you go like pop, you know, almost like Dan plus Shea? Do you go pop plus country? You know, and there's the logo, uh, you know, and you have a you know, nice font and stuff like that. I, I, I really don't know. I, I, that would be a big one, a really big one, because ultimately you're going to have to sell it um, to, you know, advertisers. You're going to have to sell it to agencies, the concept, and certainly obviously sell it to the audience. Audience, though, you can at least do with IDs and promos and things. You can explain what you're doing and you don't necessarily need the slug line, you know, the logo line, um, but you're going to need it at some point. And I don't know what that would be. And then the last thing that you're going to need to do this that you're definitely going to have to come up with is what's the benefit to the listener that you're going to tell them why they should listen? In other words, not you, what do they get out of it? A lot of these concepts just hold true no matter what the lead format is and no matter what you're adding in. It's the ratio that's huge, how you're gonna sell it, and my God, how picky you are as to what songs from the secondary format that you're gonna add in because you don't wanna blow up your original radio station. As always, subscribe to the channel. Uh, hopefully by this time, because I'm cutting this uh, you know, sort of ahead of time and I got another few in the can already, we would have already crossed over a thousand subscribers, thousands of PDs and radio people to this channel from around the world. That's awesome. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, it, you know, it really helps the channel and makes YouTube push it and all that sort of stuff. You know, and again, hit the notification bell right over here. If you hit that when there is a new lesson, they're going to tell you about it. And the like button if you like this particular one. And uh, hit the like button too if you kind of like my shirt, my rodeo shirt there, baby. Come on. Got the rodeo shirt. <laughs> and uh, my, I got this in Florida. I know, you know, I'm, I just like to have fun with these videos every once in a while. You know, it gives me something to do instead of doing the straight stuff. We were in Florida and we were at some sort of a, I don't know, you know, outdoor farmer's markety type thing. My wife, she comes running up and goes, you got to buy this hat. I go, I don't want a hat. I don't want a cowboy hat. You know, I, you know, I don't mind a cowboy hat, but I just don't wear hats at all normally other than like, you know, baseball hat for golfing and stuff. And she goes, no, no, you got to love it. Put it on, put it on, put it on. So, all right, man, it sucks. I put it on. Oh, my God, this is a Tim McGraw hat. This is what Tim McGraw wears. And it was like, okay, I I I'll buy the hat. Hence, I have it. Took it back to Toronto. And uh, good to go. <laughs> well, I love this hat. There you go. Uh, so, until the next, <laughs> the next lesson, the next video. See ya.